So here we are having a go at cutting out the front cross member. Now in your fab plans, it probably doesn't show any of this uh, configuration. What we're doing is we're cutting holes in here. You drill the corners of your hole and then you take the uh, grinder and you cut them between those centers. You could use a plasma or any other means, but we're demonstrating the grinder process at the moment and I'll show you in a minute. And this is so that our tubes that run through the inside of this can come along the front cross member and they go down through here, out the back when the hole's there and head on down that big long uh, horizontal runner down the, the uh, chassis. We've already done the hole in the middle of that cross member and that takes the hoses and the air out of the front box on the trailer and uh, those hoses go each way there and then out down the trailer. Right out. Okay, what you're looking at here is our layout of the Fab Plans trailer. Of course, we've said many times that we do it slightly differently, uh, simply because we have a requirement for extra heavy loads, and that facilitates us uh, and re requires us to put uh, heavier than the uh, Fab Plans longitudinal runs down the side. We use 100 by 50, as you can see there, and it's 5 mil, very thick and uh, we use that down both sides and we also put all of our plumbing inside the chassis and hence the holes that we've put in that front cross member. Uh, those holes go through the front cross member and through the back of it and of course you can run your plumbing and your wiring all down the car. The front tank that goes here uh, has to get all its pipes and wiring into that cross member. So that's what that hole's for and what we've done here is lay it up on the ground once we've cut it and cut all the various holes. What we will do is cut some more holes. We'll show you those later. And then we do, uh, we just lay the chassis up to make sure that we haven't forgotten anything. We take a look at all our measurements. Now, don't be worrying that these measurements will differ a little bit from what's on fab plans, and you should stick to the fab plans drawing that builds a great chassis. And only if you have a specific and different requirement would you modify them. Uh, as we do and uh, of course we've got a great deal of experience in a engineering and chassis building so just before you're modifying don't be afraid to get back to fab plans or to us and somebody will talk to you and uh, advise you if you aren't uh, experienced so there's a center line being drawn on the concrete and that goes down the chassis look we we build this we don't have a jig even though we build a lot because concrete is generally flat and it works well and you can move the thing around and doing a great job Hello budding trailer builders, I'm going to have a quick walk around of the most recently completed primary chassis layout. This is a chassis that we would typically build on the floor on the concrete because it's nice and flat. Once it's at that stage that we can lift it up without it uh, moving, we put it up on these trestles and start working on it. So I'll have a walk around for you. So uh, ignore this piece at the back, we just generally throw a bit of steel on to stop you walking into things and also it just keeps things nice and square while we're assembling. So this chassis is a 5mm um, box section, which is uh, 100 by 50 mil, and then we've got 75 by 50 mil down the centre. And the reason we've done that is when we put our 17mm uh, wooden floor on here, it sits down in this space and uh, goes right across the chassis till it gets the other side. So that brings about something that you need to think about, is when you cut your bevels at the back here, for your tread plate or whatever it is you're going to put on, uh, that there'll be two heights to consider. One is on the 100 by uh, 50. Um, this is where our wood or our deck finishes here. And so this is going to meet the top of that deck. Now on the lower material, uh, the deck is going to be sitting 17 mil higher and it's going to stop uh, in here. As you can see, there's the deck finishing there. And so the deck's going to finish about here. So when you put your tread plate on, it's going to be unsupported in this area. 
So you'll need to just continue up here with some material that you'll weld there, weld there, and on the other pieces, and that's just going to take up that space. Uh, the obvious reason for that is this is 75 mil and not 100. So just something to, whilst it looks odd, that's the reason why it looks odd. And you'll work that out in your head and with the plans when you see it. So wherever you see holes drilled in all of these tubes, that's for the galvanizing. We've got to let the air get in and out and the galvanizing liquids get in and out. And this trailer is uh, wide. When they put it in the, the vat, it goes in that way. And then they turn it upside down and put it in that way. So the galvanizing has got to be able to flow through there. And correspondingly, on the bottom, there'll be another hole here. And that's consistent right throughout the chassis. All of those holes are on the far side, as you can see. And um, other holes in various places just to help with letting the, the fluids and the air get in and out of the steelwork, especially where um, it's joined. So if we have a look up here, we've got a gusset in the corner. Um, you know, that's completely sealed. We've got to get the galvanizing material in and out uh, because it gets very hot and we don't want it blowing out. I mean, it's not going to blow this as 5 mil, but it could do if it was lighter material. Now that we're up at this end, let's have a look at the corner. Uh, this corner is specifically done, uh, again, 5 mil uh, is the cross member and 5 mil 100 by 50, whereas the other material is 75 and it's 4 mil or 3.5 even. So uh, when you're cutting these holes, don't forget to drill the corners. Put your drill in there and then get in with your grinder or whatever you're going to use your saw. But drill the corners and make them nice and round. You're not going to get any burrs and clean them all up at this stage. You don't want to have any burrs in here with all your wires and things running through. So uh, because we've cut this corner out so we can get in here and do up the nuts and bolts on our 90 degree T pieces for the air that runs down here. Uh, we've also left ourselves a little bit of space here. This will all be covered in when we finish the trailer with a little blanking plate that screws on, leaves it serviceable. Um, just make sure that you really clean these up because they can do damage. And what we do as a rule is when we've packed the air and the, and the electrical wiring in here, we just wrap it or find some other means of just making it more solid so it's not bouncing up when you go down the road, bouncing around. There's been lots of discussion uh, about having a, a weld here and here. Instead of running these, people say, call me old-fashioned, I want to see these run right through. Well, you can't run them right through in a trailer design such as this, because in the front section here, where we put the box in this area, the services run out of the box and into this cross member. And they go here, that's the services being the air and the, um, the electrical wiring. The electrical wiring and the air run past here, and if this member was going right through, we'd have to cut a hole in it anyway. So uh, the other thing is it can't run right through because this is 100 by 50 and in here we've got 75 by 50. It's lower, remember, because we're putting that, that floor in there that sits below. Now, okay, you could make that 100 tall and put the floor on top, but it's not necessary on a trailer of this weight to have three lengths of 100 by 55 mil. It's monstrously over-engineered and it adds quite a bit of weight to it. So uh, all your services run through here, past these two joints, and down here, and then it runs uh, all the way down the inside of this till it gets to the first hole. And then out of here, we're going to bring the air, which comes out and goes up into the airbag, and one bit of electrical wiring comes out of here, and it runs uh, the front side lights, and it also runs the front brakes. So that'll be part of the loom that then goes past, along with the other bit of air, and out of here we bring the next um, air line that comes out and goes up into the second airbag. And if you're running your lights as we do, um, on that airbag mounting component or your electrical wiring comes out, but there are some countries where you'll have to put your lights further back towards the rear of the trailer. We don't have to do that in New Zealand, but there will be some places where you might feel comfortable putting the lights here or even right on the back with a rubber stanchion or something of that nature. So the, air, the wiring just simply comes down to the back. Uh, let's go back up the front and have a look for you. Uh, this, again, the A-frame is made out of 
uh, 100 by 50 and it's 5 mil, very thick indeed. You're never going to bend it, you're never going to break it, it's not going to tear off there. And because of all this strength we've got here, and this is 5 mil, and these brackets on the back, this is not going to twist and it's not going to tear. And these gussets in the corner make the thing particularly rigid and particularly strong. So, not much I can tell you um, that you can't see here. Just make sure you build it nice and straight. Make sure you uh, do those cross measurements each time you, you know, have a bit of a break. You can have a little measure just to get it right. Doesn't take uh, long to put a truck strap or something on the corners and crank up the ratchet just to pull it into alignment. So when you continue welding, it doesn't pull. Uh, they will pull, as you can see, when you're welding. You've got all these welds on one side of that uh, that piece of steel. It'll it'll definitely bend. So just make sure you time your welding and weld a bit here and a bit over there and come back and do all that normal stuff that the welding school would have taught you. That's all I can show you and want to show you for now. We'll continue with this and I'll uh, get you up to date as we start adding components now. The next job for this chassis will be to finish the uh, tow hitch arrangement and that'll be the sliding adjustable one. And while we're doing that, we'll go to the water jet and we'll cut out the components that are required for uh, mounting the axles on and we might show you how that's done on the water jet and some of the planning around that. Okay, thanks for watching.